Welcome to St. James Episcopal Church in Painesville, Ohio, as we celebrate the second Sunday in Advent. Please join us in the following prayers. On this second Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of peace. Jesus Christ is our peace. He is the Prince of Peace, and the fruit of his presence is peace. Let us pray. Jesus, you are peace even when there is hatred. Help us to forgive like you when we are hurt or wounded. Bring peace into our hearts, we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to St. James Episcopal Church in Painesville. Mother Vanessa is off this week, spending time with her family as they mourn the death of Mark's father, Thomas Clark. I'm Susan Cowling, one of St. James worship leaders, and I will be leading morning prayer right too. I'm joined by two other worship leaders, Libby and Tom Hill, by Deacon Dan Hind, and by my husband, Sam. The service starts on page 75 in the Book of Common Prayer with the opening words of scripture from Mark's Gospel. That's page 75. Watch, for you know not when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Please turn to page 79 
for the confession of sin. That's page 79. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel or stand or sit in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Continuing on page 80, Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior draws near. Come, let us adore him. Let us join together in reciting the Venite on page 82, page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence, the thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and 8 through 13, found on page 672 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 672, Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and 8 through 13. We will say the psalm in unison. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Next will be the readings and the gospel and sermon. A lesson from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. Thanks be to God. Let us read the third song of Isaiah, found on page 87 of the Book of Common Prayer. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming, coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. 
Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. Thanks be to God. Let us now say the Song of Zechariah, found on page 92 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he should, would give us that we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to God the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in, in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of our ever-present and ever-loving God, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let me ask you something. Are you exhausted and tired of this pandemic? Are you frustrated with wearing a mask everywhere you go? Are you frustrated with not getting to see your friends, your parents, your children, or your grandchildren. One of the things that I have missed the most over the last nine months is not being able to give a hug to another human being. My heart aches for that simple embrace, an expression of caring and love that unites us all. Now I know that by not hugging someone, I'm not only protecting myself, but I'm also protecting that other person from the possibility of contracting this terrible virus. When we see the rise in the number of people who are testing positive, 
and we see the number of souls who have perished due to COVID, we can't help but be discouraged and sad. How many close friends and family members have been taken from us? And how long will this thing go on? Now then, how can we look past these times and hope for a brighter future? Where can we be together with each other? By faith. Faith is believing in something or someone without seeing any physical proof. We have faith in our health care workers who battle this virus, trying to help the sickest survive. We have faith in the scientists who are working day and night on a vaccine that will help our bodies battle this virus. We have faith in each other that we will follow the safety guidelines to protect each other. And then there's our faith in God, the great healer and comforter. By faith, we know that God is present with us as we go through all this, and that in the end, God's grace and love will bring us together. The second candle on our Advent wreath this week represents faith. It is through faith that we prepare and await the presence of our Lord into this world, because God has promised us salvation through him. In the book of Isaiah, we hear God's promise of what is to come and that we must be prepared. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. In today's reading from Mark's Gospel, we hear the same call to prepare the way of the Lord. We hear how John the Baptist was baptizing people, proclaiming repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People from the whole Judean countryside in Jerusalem were coming to the Jordan River to hear the message of this man and to be baptized by him. Why were these people flocking to hear this man and to be baptized? I think one reason is due to the fact these people were living through very difficult times. The whole region was under occupation by the Roman Empire and it was causing restrictions on their personal lives and also their spiritual lives. These people longed for a time when the Messiah would come as promised by God and release them from the oppression and bring them into complete union with him. They were coming to the Jordan to confess their sins in preparation for that time. They were putting their faith in action by believing the words of John when he told them, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John is asking those present to believe in something that's going to happen and telling all to prepare themselves for when that time comes. That kind of faith can be difficult at times. Sometimes when the distractions of life and the world get in the way, faith can be a forgotten and far-fetched idea. It can make it hard to look to that baby in the manger for the hope and love that God promises us. That's why faith is so important, because it allows us to hold on to something and to claim victory over the distractions we encounter. In the first letter of John, the author states, Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Faith can allow us to look forward to the time when we celebrate the coming of the Christ child with joy, whether apart or together. And it is faith that also allows us to celebrate Christ's victory over death, which gives us all life eternal. It is also faith in God and each other, and that will enable us to look past the present troubles and know in the near future we will be together again to celebrate God's continuing love and grace. 
and, may, and maybe even hug one another. From an Advent hymn, Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Amen. Turning to page 96, that's page 96, let us join together in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continuing with the prayers, starting on page 97. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with suffrage B on page 98. Suffrage B on page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. The Collect of the Day for the second Sunday in Advent is found on page 211. That's page 211 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Turning back to page 98, that's page 98. Let us say the Collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrances of your glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and a collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for mission. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth 
and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people for the season of Advent are Form 6, found on page 392. That's page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop, for our own bishops, for our priest, and for our parish staff, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for all those on our prayer list, all those par parishioners, friends and family, first responders, those in the armed forces, health care and essential workers, those suffering from COVID, their family and friends, and all those we name before you now. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for birthdays and anniversaries, and those we now name. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Nancy Bowman, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom and those we now name. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Please join me in the Book of Common Prayer, page 821, The Prayers for Sound Government, page 821. Let us pray. O Lord, our governor, bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to other nations of the earth. Lord, keep this nation under your care. To the president and members of the cabinet, to governors of states, mayors of cities, and to all in the administrative authority, grant wisdom and grace to, in the exercise of their duties. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. To senators and representatives, and to those who make our laws in states, cities, and towns, give courage, wisdom, and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. To the judges and officers of our courts, give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice served. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. And finally, teach our people to rely on your strength 
and to accept their responsibilities to their fellow citizens, that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well being of our society, that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor your holy name. For yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Mother Vanessa, the vestry, and your treasurers, thank you for your continued and generous support of St. James during this difficult time. You may mail in your contributions to the office, make arrangements with your bank, or go online through St. James or the diocese. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. <laughs>
turning to page 101. That's page 101. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world, world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.